Well, happy Monday, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in. It is March 15th here uh, on the platform. So the Honolulu Star Advertiser, I'm Ryan Kalei Suji, joined by Yanji Denise. And thanks so much for tuning in to Spotlight Hawaii. Uh, Yanji, today we have a guest that always uh, attracts a lot of questions and a lot of viewers that love tuning in to get updates uh, from our next guest here today. That's right. We are joined by the Director of the Department of Labor and Industrial Relations, Ann Pereira Eustaquio. We're so happy to have her and we're so happy to have all of you. I see a lot of people already writing in, uh, letting us know that they're here. Thank you so much. Uh, and also, please put your questions in the comments for Ann. And Ann, we've got so much to talk about. Uh, we've got you know trillions of dollars being yeah. spent by the federal government. <laughs> so let's talk about how that trickles down to the people who are most in need here in our community. Uh, what do we know about the bill? And uh, if you could walk us through sort of sector by sector what the benefits are. Okay, we are really excited about the new bill and the new um, programs that um, we have implemented to provide uh, claimants with additional benefits. And so the first benefit was for PUA. They're adding an additional 25 weeks of benefits to a PUA claim. And PUA also comes with the additional $300 of FPUC, and that's the $300 plus up that will run to September 6th. In Hawaii, the week ending date, the payable date is September 4th. And then we have those who are on regular unemployment insurance who will get what we call the PEUC extension, Pandemic Extended Unemployment Compensation of 300, of, I'm sorry, of their regular weekly benefit amount up until September 6th as well. So 25 additional weeks as well as the $300 plus up. And those are the programs that we're in implementing with this new bill. And this is so the new bill that President Biden has just signed into law. Uh, if we can go back to the previous one in that was signed by then President Trump uh, at the end of last year, and we know that that took again some time uh, because we had some mainframe issues as you spoke of, uh, and then you were able to gain processing payments where are we at with those claims uh, and, and are, is there any backlog remaining from any of those? So those claims have been run. Those were the additional 11 weeks of PEUC. We needed to run monetaries for each and every claimant that qualified for the additional 11 weeks of PEUC. And we also were able to get up and running the EB20 claim extensions for all those who had opted to go on EB20. The problem with that extension was there was a gap in between payments. So every claimant was different. Claimants could choose to bypass EB20, move on to PUC extension of 11 weeks and have gaps in between, which created a lot of issues on the mainframe and um, programming problems. Okay, we've got a couple of questions here about expired benefits and what happens next. Cheryl is saying, what's the next step now that I expired yesterday? Uh, Toby says, expired claims, how do those go forward? Do we do anything to move those forward or will it be extended automatically? Yes, so many, many claimants are coming to their one year expiration of a claim. You know, a claim is good for 12 months and um, that 12 months have come up here in March for many of these claimants. We know it's very stressful and um, a very um, scary um, prospect to know that your claim is ending and you may not receive benefits. So claimants at this point do not need to do anything to get their claim extended. We call the, ex the um, end of the claim their BYE, benefit year end. Many claimants know that. Many claimants see that their BYE is coming to an end. We are reviewing every single claim. We have to make sure that these claimants do not qualify what we, what we call an initial claim, a brand new initial claim. If claimants went back to work, and um, received earnings and then qualified again, they can move on to a brand new initial claim. And so that needs to be determined first. So we determine whether they have enough earnings to move them on. If they do, claimants will receive an email and that email will tell them to go log on to their account and apply for a new initial claim. During that initial claim process, the, the department will determine whether they qualify for a new monetary or not, and what that monetary is. With the last bill that was passed through um, President Trump on the, under the CAA, there was a statute change that said that if a claimant's brand new monetary 
was either $25 or more less than their current monetary or weekly benefit amount, a claimant could choose whether they wanted to stay on their current PEUC claim or move to a brand new initial claim. And they will be asked at that time if they'd like to move forward with their new initial claim or stay on their PEUC claim. If they decide to move through with their new initial claim, we will process their brand new claim and they will be given a brand new monetary. If they choose to stay on their PEUC claim, then they will get moved out. Their BYE will be moved out for another quarter and their monetary will run for their brand new PEUC claim. Okay. Uh, another question that we'd like to bring in is from Lorna. She's asking, are they implementing any virtual assistant that would help since there's no physical in-person appointments? You know, we spoke to this governor a few weeks ago back on this conversation. He said that is something that uh, he was maybe looking into with the department to see if that would be possible to do some kind of virtual assistant like a Zoom or WebEx um, sessions with some of these claimants. Has there been any development on that uh, and in terms of providing more support for some of these individual claims? Yes, that is definitely something we are looking at. So we're looking at implementing a virtual appointment system where claimants can come online, they can register for a virtual appointment, and we will um, implement that hopefully in the next couple of months. We're still working with the vendor to bring that on board. So uh, this might be, this is specific to Rob, this question, but there might be others in the same situation. So I want to bring this one in. He says he's pending monetary determined PEUC since October. He's been calling and emailing every week. Please help. So what about people who are in that pending category? I can't say specifically for Rob, but majority of them who are waiting since October are those who have what we call an overpayment on their regular 26 weeks of benefits and have not yet moved over to their 13 weeks of PEUC. And we are not um, allowed to move them over through statutes to this new PEUC um, application because this, the regulation specifically says if an individual has not yet exhausted their regular unemployment insurance claim, we cannot move an individual to the PEUC program. So if they have an overpayment, that means they were not yet fully paid within the regular claim. We need to rectify the overpayment, adjust the weeks, pay them until they exhaust the regular benefits, and then move them to PEUC. You know, we know overpayment is something that is impacting a lot of people who are in that pending category or on hold uh, because of a situation where, as you just described, uh, you know, one of the thoughts that came in through another conversation that we had with a Facebook group, group was uh, that specializes in some of these claims that are coming forward is asking if there was a way to just hold the amount that they are suspected of overpaying rather than the entire lump sum of money. So for example, if someone is owed $15,000 but has a overpayment of $500, is there a way to just hold the $500 rather than all of the benefits that they are set to receive? Right, that would seem very um, rational and an easy thing to do, but it's not necessarily just the overpayment. It's the week that they exhaust the regular benefits. And so it's just not holding that money because we can't co-mingle federal funds and state trust funds. So the regular unemployment insurance 26 weeks, you claimants get paid through the unemployment insurance trust fund that is funded by employers in the state of Hawaii. PEUC is funded by federal, 100% federal funding that does not come from directly from the employers here in Hawaii through the trust fund. We can't co-mingle money. So we need to clean up the overpayment on regular, adjust the weeks, exhaust their claim on regular, and then move them to PEUC. So it's much more complicated than just the fund, you know, getting money and giving it to another um, couple of weeks that were overpaid. Curtis has a question for new filers. The governor waived the job search requirement, but all the paperwork, paperwork still says to register with Higher Net Hawaii and keep a record of jobs applied for. So which is correct? Is the hire requirement waived or do they still need to go through those steps? Yes, the governor did in his proclamation waive um, the job search requirement. And so that is the case. 
Um, claimants do not have to look for work right now. It has not changed on the system. Um, that would be a huge change in our system. We are focusing and concentrating on the brand new programs. And if we were to stop programming for the brand new programs and adjust these other little things within the system, it would take away from um, paying claimants. And so, yes, it has been um, waived and claimants do not have to look for work right now. Eventually, when the waiver is um, no longer in effect, claimants will, could, will have to then register with Hawaii, Higher Net Hawaii and also look for work, three contacts every week. There seems to be still a lot of questions about uh, those who are pending, uh, again, overpayment questions and them just waiting for some sort of callback and being able to make contact with someone. Can you update us on the call center, the volume that you're getting and any sort of update on the amount of people that are still waiting in that pending category and how you're working to resolve some of those issues? Okay, as for the call center, um, I don't know if I ever mentioned on this program, but we've, we were having problems again with um, bot calls. And so we implemented a bot blocker several weeks ago. We were getting a little over 200,000 calls a day. With the bot blocker, we brought it down to about 40,000 calls. That's still um, additional calls that each individual makes, but those are calls that people continue to call and not through a block, bot blocker. We see that about 5,000 to 6,000 calls are, are actual calls from claimants, individual claimants. We're able to handle close to 2,000 calls a day. The rest get dropped. And so we also implemented a process where we have several individuals who are actually working on calling back drop calls on subsequent days. And so we will put a list together of those calls that were dropped. And we have a team that are calling back claimants to um, determine what they called for and if we could help them. So I think our biggest issue again is still claimants are not picking up their phones. You know, we're calling and um, we're not getting responses from claimants. I know I'm one of them who doesn't like to pick up a call that's blocked or a call that I don't know, I know what number's coming through. So I understand that, but we'd ask that you pick it up and um, it might be one of us calling to see if we could help you with your claim. As for the overpayments, we have put a team together. So part of the adjudicators that are working at the Convention Center on the special project, we took um, um, a group of them and we trained them spe specifically on handling overpayments. And those individual adjudicators are addressing overpayments as well as fraud and moving forward with a, cleaning up those claims and moving claimants on. Um, this is sort of expanding on that and, and what you just said sort of answered this, but I want to go a little deeper. This is from Christine Donnelly. She writes the Kokua column um, and, and, and fields a lot of these questions herself. She says, regarding overpayments, is there any way to do this on a mass scale, resolve similar problems all at once? And if not, what is the plan to resolve the overpayments on an individual basis? How many claims are pending due to overpayments? Now, I know you just laid out that you have this team in place that is specifically mm -hmm. geared to that. Um, how big is that team and, and how many claims are, do you know offhand how many claims are in that status? Okay, I can't give you an exact number of how many claims are in that status just because of the um, report mechanisms from this mainframe. It, so what I do know is that there's probably thousands of them and we do have a team that's working on them. They cannot be worked on as a group. Each claim in itself is extremely different you know, in one overpayment is not the same overpayment for another claimant. Also, under federal statutes, we have to also look at fraud. Because there was an overpayment, the adjudicator also has to determine whether that overpayment was due to fraud and whether it was fault or no fault of the claimant. So there's many different steps an adjudicator must take instead of just to say, oh, you got paid um, for vacation and you didn't report it, let's clean this up and move you on. It's a little more complicated than that. And so we still seem to see a, a lot of questions questioning uh, this next round, uh, of course, the one that we explained at the top of the broadcast that you say uh, through President uh, Biden's uh, signature and pa uh, passing of this new support. When can people expect to start seeing those claims be processing, uh, being processed by the department and actually seeing uh, some of the benefits uh, on their end? 
So we were very proactive on this extension because it wasn't as extensive as the others. And so we were able to program majority of the process beforehand. And so all the programming has been complete. This past Sunday, we ran 7,500 monetary claims. So we have to run the monetary for every single claimant moving on to this brand new 25 weeks of PEUC. And so the way we chose to run these monetaries were to run those who are exhausted benefits on the 13th. So week ending March 13th, those are the first group. You cannot get paid for this new extension until March 20th, week ending March 20th. So those who exhaust on the 13th, we will make sure to have the monetaries run throughout the week. So we ran 7,500 on Sunday. We plan to run 7,500 Tuesday night, another 7,500 Wednesday night, the same for Thursday and the same for Friday. And as claimants exhaust, we will then run their monetaries and move them on to the brand new extension. Now, many of these claimants, like I said earlier, will reach their BYE, benefit year end. And so a review has to be done to determine whether they qualify for a brand new initial claim or not. And so if you're one of those claimants who reached your BYE, we will make a determination on whether you qualify and you shall receive an email. If you don't, then you should see your monetary extended on your claim as well as your BYE date moving one quarter. So you won't see your BYE moving all the way to the end of September when this new extension ends. And that's because we have to do a review every single quarter to make sure that you don't qualify for a brand new claim. That's one of the federal requirements. And so we're moving it out for another um, three months and then we will move it again after that. Okay, Angel has a question that you kind of covered at the top, but I just want to make sure it's clear because I see a couple of questions similar to this. Uh, what about claimants who did not have additional work to report and the claim expired yesterday, or perhaps, you know, not necessarily yesterday, but a week or two ago, or is expiring now? It will be automatically extended as well. Will MD have to be redone if the claim is expired? So do they have to reapply essentially? Only if they do qualify for a new claim. And so that will be determined on our end. And so, yes, those who expired prior to yesterday, those um, claims have been reviewed. They were reviewed this weekend and you should be receiving an email in them if you do qualify for initial claim or you should see your BYE moving out this week. Those who exhausted yesterday, which was actually the 13th and, re and then filed on the 14th, you will then see an email in the mail come this next coming up week or next week you shall see your BYE move out and your monetary run as well. So it just depends on where you're at in the claim. You do not need to do anything unless you receive an email from us telling you to go in and file a brand new initial claim. Other than that, we will review your claim, move your BYB, BYE out, and run your monetary for the brand new extension. Uh, another question coming in from Harriet. What is the process if relocating to the mainland to look for work? Are you able to collect PEUC 25? Uh, if you can give us an update on that situation, we know that many have moved out of the state, uh, but maybe are owed some of the money while working here locally. What would you advise for those in this situation? Yes, so you're allowed to move from state to state and if you do move, you need to um, change your address to make sure that you let us know that you moved and you have to follow all of the requirements in that state. So here in Hawaii, um, the governor has waived um, registry for work and looking for work. Many other states have not done that. And so depending on the state that you move to, you need to follow their work search requirements. Okay, um, Tiffany has a question. Hold on, Ellie. These and, and we appreciate it. These questions are coming in so fast. I'm just trying to keep up with all of them. But uh, this is just a basic one. When can we expect this email if we are going to receive it? It depends on when you ex you exhaust your claim or um, come to your BYE. So those who came to their BYE say this past Saturday, the 13th was the end of their claim. This week they should be seeing an email, or they should see their BYE move out and a monetary run for the brand new 
25 weeks of PEUC. And so it, it'll, it, so it's typically like a week after you expire, you should see that change reflected. And if you don't see that change reflected, should you call? What's the best thing to do? It should be within that week because you don't get paid until the end of the week, correct? So those who are exhausted on the 13th, they won't get paid again for the week ending the 20th. So they won't have to file until March 21st. And so within that week, we'll do a review and you should get an email. You know, as we talk about this year mark for many people who are having to reapply uh, and, and are continuing on in this process, what have you seen in the overall numbers of unemployment through the state? We know there was a large spike, obviously, during that first lockdown period. And now as uh, things begin to reopen, what are the overall statistics and numbers looking like in the unemployment landscape here in Hawaii? Well, we do know that regular claims have dropped. Um, they've dropped drastically, and that's why we triggered off of EB20. We are still seeing a very, very high workload on the extensions. So we still pay out tens of thousands of claimants every week. So far since March 1st, we've paid out $5 billion into the Hawaii economy through unemployment insurance payments. And so we still have a little over 100,000 claimants with PUA as well as regular still filing claims. Um, I want to take this question from Jamie. She's one of the administrators for the unemployment uh, Facebook group, which is 27,000 strong now. Uh, she says, you know, if you got no email, no BYE extension reflected on your account, should we guide claimants to call? If you don't see either of those things uh, within a you know reasonable time frame, what's the next step? Right. So if you've passed your BYE and it's more than a week, then I would say call the call center, definitely, because um, something needs to be looked at on your claim. If you, it's not a week yet, that within that week, we're still working on those claims, trying to determine whether you actually qualify for your new initial claim and whether we need to move out your BYE and extend your monetary for you. But yes, if it's over a week, please call the call center and let them know that you're still waiting for either your BYE to be moved out or to, for the email to be told to file a new initial claim. Um, Monique also has another question about that. What qualifies for a new claim currently working, worked at some point during the last year? We know that there are many different types of situations in which people are finding themselves maybe finding work uh, for a few months and then getting laid off again or going through uh, various cycles of employment. Uh, what would you uh, advise for those who are seeing this uh, in, in their own scenarios? Right. So we look to see if they had earnings um, after they were unemployed and whether those earnings are five times their weekly benefit amount. And then we have to do a complicated calculation like you do with your regular unemployment insurance benefits. And we determine whether you could possibly qualify for a new initial claim. Again, because of that special requirement that was passed in the CAA, if your, your weekly benefit amount for your new initial claim is lower, $25 or more lower than your um, current PEUC claim, that we are allowing you to stay on your PEUC claim. So all of that needs to be decided once we determine whether you can move forward, how much earnings you earned, and whether you qualify and what that new monetary qualification is. There's another scenario here, and I know we're reaching the top of the hour, so <laughs> we'll try to get to as many as we can before we have to let you go. But uh, Liza says, what about the pending claims due to job separation? When, is an uh, when would an adjudicator ca contact claimants? There, of course, are those conflicts between an employer and a claimant. Uh, someone says they were fired. Someone says that they were vol voluntarily left. Uh, what's, mm -hmm. the, what's the status of that? Okay, so we do have um, the rest of the adjudicators um, that are not specifically assigned to overpayments working on those types of adjudication issues. We are handling them the oldest claims first and moving on forward. And so if you know that you were laid off because of COVID and it wasn't a misconduct. What we're seeing is we have a lot of claimants who initially applied for unemployment insurance benefits and they actually stated that they were um, discharged. And discharged means that you were let go for misconduct, which is not the correct term 
right? If you were laid off because of a furlough, because of COVID. And so I would just definitely not wait for an adjudicator to call, call the call center and state that, you know, you were not um, let go for misconduct, that you were let go because of COVID. And if you had something to prove the fact, like a letter saying that you were being furloughed or a release notice saying that you were being furloughed or um, let go, what we call um, leave without pay or let go because of um, COVID, please let us know. Oh, and that could be a very simple mistake because, you know, you think that you got let go, discharge, it seems like a synonym, but uh, for, for what you're doing, the terminology really does matter. Correct. It does. When we're talking about these adjudicators, they play a very critical role in a lot of these claims. And it really is just a matter of them being able to get to as many as possible. What is the situation with the amount of adjudicators you have on now? Is there any plans to bring on more as you continue to have to work through some of these very specific claims? Yes, we do plan to bring on more. We are working with um, the governor and some of the legislators to provide us with additional funds so we can move forward with um, hiring additional staff for additional adjudicators. You know, it does take um, some funds to, to hire and to find a location for them as well as equipment. You know, we do need um, computer equipment for each and every new um, individual we bring on board. We are also looking at um, possibly extending some contracts for adjudicators. Okay, I know we are wrapping up. Um, is there any final words that you have for the people that are, you know, a lot of people are saying, I, I've been trying to get through that call center. I know you say pick up your phone, but, you know, what do you say that we see a mix of comments and a lot of them are also very positive. We do want to shout those out as well, that there are a lot of people who really appreciate what you and your staff are doing. And on the flip side, there are other people who are very frustrated um, with having to wait weeks or months for benefits. So what's your final message for us this morning? Yeah, so I know it's extremely frustrating. I know waiting on the line, um, you know, you're trying to get through, but we are trying to call back those who got dropped and didn't get through. So that's a different, another avenue that we're reaching out to claimants. So please pick up your phones, no matter if you know that number or not. Also, we are working on a virtual appointment system. Um, be, be um, ready for that. We're going to come out with that and you can make an appointment virtually to meet with one of our um, claim staff here. And we will continue to service the phones. We will continue to hire um, to, to service those through the phone. So if you are looking for work, we are still desperately looking for individuals to come and work here at the unemployment insurance office. We're looking for adjudicators and we're also looking for call center agents. So please come onto our website. The applications are there, please apply. And we'd love to have you on board. And lastly, what is the time frame for those virtual appointments? I don't have an exact date for you yet right now. We are working with the contractor. It depends on how quickly we can get this spun up to um, interface with our mainframe. We'd like to be able to interface this application so that when a claimant does make an appointment, we know what that appointment is all about and we're prepared so that what we get on the line with them, we can help them right away and not have to do some kind of research on their claim first. Yeah, and we also know that that process is happening where you're moving everything to another server as we spoke mm -hmm. on before. And I'm sure yes. uh, that will also be a relief, but that's also simultaneously being worked on as you continue to add on uh, that as well. Yes. And a uh, great note about those looking for work. I think there are many people who are making comments on here that would be great adjudicators because they seem very yes. knowledgeable <laughs> of this process and they might fit in a little easier because they um, have experience with themselves and they maybe are speaking the right. same language right now. So. Uh, right. Great opportunity for maybe some of them out there as well. Well, thank you so much for, again, uh, taking this time to answer so many questions. And we really appreciate uh, you taking these uh, our viewers' questions directly and, and doing your best to get through all of them. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Aloha. Have a great day. Aloha. Well, Ryan, we got to a lot, and I know some of you might have joined late. So she laid out all the benefits and the and the mechanisms that uh, the new bill is sort of going through and getting out benefits to uh, all of you who are still waiting. So when this broadcast is finished, make sure to watch from the beginning. And we appreciate uh, the folks from the unemployment Facebook group. I know Jamie's on here. She said she was furiously taking notes. So 
Thank you for helping to digest and process information. And, and Ryan, you're absolutely right. A lot of these folks would be perfectly suited to take some of these jobs because they know personally how frustrating this can be. Yeah, and just familiar with the process and the terminology. I mean, this is not an easy issue. There are so much complexities to it with, uh, as you hear her breaking down all these different programs, uh, these new timelines, as well as uh, just the the amount of things that need to go into just a single claim sometimes can get very specific. So for those that are uh, have somewhat knowledge of, of even the baseline, uh, you're, you have an upper hand in those areas because you're not having to learn what some of this terminology is. So it might be a great opportunity for that. Uh, again, as Yanji mentioned, we encourage you to go back and look. We know that there were questions about some of the overpayments, uh, questions that came in later. You know, the director talked about that at the top of the broadcast about the specifics of the overpayment and how they're working through that. But also good to hear that they're continuing to look for uh, adjudicators, but also looking for ways to connect people through that web developed program that may allow people the opportunity to speak to someone directly over a Zoom like conference program to ask their specific questions. Yeah, they're not ready for face to face, but at least face to face online would be a very big step for a lot of people who just feel frustrated uh, dealing with the email and also with the phone system. Uh, coming up later this week, we are switching gears. Uh, we, we invite Anne to come on every month, so I'm sure she'll be back with us in April. But uh, until then, on Friday, we have Honolulu Mayor Rick Blangiardi. We're really looking forward to talking to him. You know, the tier system has been loosening up. We're going to talk about opening bars and uh, youth sports. And uh, there's a third area, and now I'm blanking on it. <laughs> we also want to talk to him about the weddings. Uh, there's a lot of people yes. who are asking if weddings should be allowed or not. Uh, we want to get his comments on that. We know he spoke directly about that. So looking forward to that conversation with the mayor. Again, that's on Friday. But on Wednesday, we're going to be spotlighting the film industry here in Hawaii, catching up with some of the cast members of the Netflix film Finding Ohana, hearing from them about their experiencing filming here in the islands, but also getting an update from the film office on the different projects that are be currently worked on here in Hawaii and what that means to the overall economy. It's a, providing a lot of jobs right now during a time where people are looking for work. And we, we are excited to hear not only from the cast, but also get updates on what's to come ahead. That's right. So we appreciate all of you for tuning in. Thank you for all of your questions. We try to get to as many as possible. Thank you so much to Jamie again for digesting that and spreading the word uh, to your group. Uh, we wish you guys a great week. Stay safe out there and we'll see you right back here on Wednesday. Aloha.